Ultimately, we'll ask ourselves, what is the true color of the moon, and what does it mean? I purchased my first telescope about 10 years ago, the primary targets, the planets, and the moon. Using high magnification, I've enjoyed zooming in on the moon and the craters and looking for the extraterrestrial presence on its surface. However, soon enough, I started wishing for a wider field of view with less magnification so I can see more of the stars. And that's when I bought this beautiful, superb telescope designed by David Levy called the Comet Hunter. It is a Maxotov Newtonian optical design that produces pinpoint stars all the way to the edge of the field of view. Recently I purchased an RC telescope and a simple Newtonian uh, from Skywatcher so I can use it with my thermal cameras. And uh, that's when I really started wondering about the color on the moon. Is it real? Why are we shown only black and white or grayscale images of the surface? One morning the light bulb went on. A balloon was up right close to the moon and that's when I was able to calculate the temperature on the moon. The temperature is not that much different than out here in the desert during the summer. Just incredible. A typical hot air balloon has a skin temperature of about 120 degrees and the moon was slightly dimmer than that. But of course it was behind some thin clouds. But nonetheless its temperature could be survivable on the surface. The most amazing thing that caught my attention was this halo around the moon. Is it an atmosphere, thermosphere? It really fascinated me and that's when I realized what is really happening. The solar angle of illumination relative to the surface dictates the amount of heat that's being deposited. And so we see a bright red which indicates a hot zone right normal to that vector. And um, also when the phase is half we look and notice that there is also a tiny gradient indicating the presence of an atmosphere. This was incredibly fascinating, but I wanted a little bit more resolution. Modern technology is enabling an unprecedented understanding of the heavens and the earth. By using a high-resolution modern long-wave infrared sensor in combination with a reflective surface telescope and the incredible power of software, I was able to put together this incredible time-lapse. And sure enough, the inner atmosphere became visible. Have a look at this, folks. 
just incredible. Notice where the surface terminates. I couldn't see that before and it threw me off. But beyond the atmosphere or the surface, we can see red, yellow, green, and blue, a gradient, temperature gradient, due to the atmosphere. This new exciting realization rekindled my interest in space imagery of the lunar surface. I had not visited any of the NASA websites in decades. Could I find evidence of a lunar atmosphere? During this period, I'm in the various tanks within the three stages of Saturn V launch vehicle begin to pressurize. We have firing command. The firing command is in. We're on the other sequence. It's minus two minutes and 20 seconds. If you've ever visited the Kennedy Space Center, um, you probably visited the Apollo exhibit and right before you get to see the rocket in this huge hangar um, you go through the control room which you just saw and they play um, um, all the videos and stuff from uh, the Apollo 11 launch uh, it is quite quite interesting and fascinating I've been to Kennedy Space Center so many times while living in Florida and uh, I've enjoyed it um, every time, but after a while it gets old. Here's me learning to pilot the space shuttle. Uh, there's lots of exhibits and things to see, and um, it's, it's quite enjoyable. Um, let's listen to what Jim Lovell has to say. successfully orbited the moon, and the astronauts returned safely to the Earth. I know, I'm Jim Lovell, and I was one of the crew of this spacecraft, Apollo 8. We were the first men to see the surface of the moon from just a few miles away. But it was the hundreds of thousands of men and women who worked on that team, and the millions of people who supported the mission that really made it possible. That way, I guess, we all went to the photos brought back by Apollo 8 were just incredible. It revealed a moon full of color and greenery. Unbelievable. But hold that thought, we'll come back to it. Before the Apollo missions, the lunar orbiters brought back some incredible photography. And that's what I turned to for evidence of an atmosphere. <laughs> Mia, will you have a look at this, folks? This is just incredible. I am looking at these photos again for the first time. It seems like the first time. I've looked at these before and I ignored those streaks. I didn't know what they were. I thought it was just electronic noise. These aircraft scan the imagery in strips and then they process it on board and then they beam back the radio signals from the scanning of the film. So all processing was done on board. And so I just assumed it was nonsense. Wow, these views are so breathtaking and um, you know, these streaks, this very light um, haziness that's in their atmosphere can also be observed when looking against a dark shadow, a contrast. Look at that. You can almost see how the light uh, has a circular path there. Unbelievable, folks. It's almost as if the wind is blowing like right over the edge of that crater and the sunlight catches that faint haziness. Unbelievable. The thrill of discovering the lunar atmosphere was just too much and just when I thought I was at the peak he got even more interesting what I discovered next just left me speechless folks this is one of my favorite photos notice the faint shadow of the evening sun across the dusty atmosphere of the moon there's so much in this photo 
It is incredible. Look down here. Wow, what is that? What are we seeing? Then I saw it. The spaceship in the crater. <laughs> Once you see that, you cannot unsee it. I went, what? No way. I have stared at it, looked away and back, and I could not shake it. Once you see that, you can't see it. Then got even more interesting. Look at the, uh, the sky there. And also, I'll show you in a second in the foreground, the fog going down a uh, crevice into a lake. But right now, those are marks from the scanner. Okay, you can see them throughout the photos. You can also see stars very faint, but the atmosphere I highlighted in blue. Yeah, just incredible. So look at that, look at the city right there. Oh my God. How come I never saw that before? This is incredible, folks. And look at the fog. I assumed that was some, you know, uh, processing mistake, some chemical um, processing of the film that went awry. Look how the water flows down or some liquid and it gives off steam. Unbelievable, folks. And if there's water, could there be vegetation? while I was scanning and uh, looking down. And this is my coloring, folks. I came across vegetation. Unbelievable, folks. Look at that. It was there all along in plain sight. You see, this is a rile and the moon has um, water. We already know that. And it makes sense that it would seep out through the ground or the ground could be moist in the shadowy areas and there could be vegetation there. This is way too exciting, folks. So I set out to image it with my own telescope. Okay, so this is my setup. I got an 18 Smith cast grain. Got a nice little camera and color wheel, filter wheel. And there's the moon. See the moon? We're looking at the moon. And uh, here we're looking at. Uh, oh, whoa! We're not looking at anything. Here we go. This is where the Apollo uh, 11 mission was. By using a high resolution camera and uh, the software processing tool uh, Registax, uh, I was able to create some super high resolution images in multicolor and then combine them. Look at this tool. It uses wavelets to sharpen. It is just incredible, folks. Um, the tools available to us now are just unbelievable. Here is a sequence um, of images so you can see the sharpening power of wavelet transforms. Look at that. Unbelievable. We're looking at the Apollo uh, 11 landing site and I'll show you a graphic uh, in a short while. But look at that. Um, now I'm going backwards. So the blur is the stacked image. With this technique we're removing the effects of the atmosphere. So here's the Apollo 11 uh, landing site. Uh, I focused on that because I'm intrigued, as you'll see later. Um, yeah, so on the right is what we can get with this process and high resolution uh, cameras. Now, here's a comparison, folks. Uh, on the left, you see what a typical uh, color camera can do. And that's because it has a Bayer uh, filter array in front of the sensor to um, select and produce color. So it interpolates between adjacent pixels to uh, determine the color at a particular pixel. Uh, so it's low resolution, plus it suffers for, from some color fringing, okay? In the center, you see uh, a stacked image captured with these incredible new uh, astronomy cameras. This one, the IMX um, 178, has 2.4 micrometer pixels, much smaller than the Sony camera that I used 
Um, and then with um, wavelet transforms, we take it up to another level of resolution. Just incredible, folks. And so basically we're going to do this for uh, all the primary colors, red, green, and blue. And then also um, I take a luminosity and infrared for calibration. And when we combine all that, the results are just stunning. Before I show you the final result, let's talk about the sensitivity of our eyes. We are wonderfully made and we have incredible sensors, but uh, electronic sensors are surpassing um, our human capability. If you ever looked at Jupiter, it just looks like a disk. It's because the intensity overpowers our eyesight. But with electronic sensors and cameras, we can control these channels separately. We can use uh, different... Um, algorithmic uh, scales, etc. We have so much more control. The hyperspectral imager on board Galileo took this uh, photo of uh, the moon and look at that greenery. Wow, when I saw that I said that's the true color of the moon right there. It corresponds with what Apollo 8 photographed. Just incredible, folks. And then the Himawara 8 and the GOES satellite imaging suites uh, confirmed the same thing. Here is one of the most incredible images. After I saw this incredible breathtaking photo of the moon, folks, I had my answer. I knew what the correct color of the moon should be. It was this one. Even though it was low resolution, there's a lot of greenery right where Apollo 11 landed. And so I was anxious to process the high resolution images to confirm that. So without further delay, here's the incredible high resolution photos of the Apollo 11 landing site that I produced. <laughs> These images are incredible, folks. Look at all that vegetation clinging to the bottom of um, the craters. Just incredible, folks. The location where they landed or claim to have landed looks nothing like they photographed. And we know why it was done in a studio. Because they did not want to show us the beautiful lush greenery on the moon. After the Lunar Observer made those uh, images, they realized to keep it all quiet. Just incredible, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation, and if you have, give it a thumbs up, and uh, stay tuned for more. I am only warming up. I have a lot of gear, and I'm processing all the other Apollo landing site. Thanks again for watching everyone. See you in my next video.